<laughs> Mr. Diddy. All right, family, I want to welcome you and remind you that you are now listening to Giami Journey Radio. I am your host, Tim, and I will be the moderator on this journey as we look at the 
What do I call this show? Man, tribal quotes. Because you know this is the heart of a similar production where we strive, strive, strive to blow up your old paradigm. <laughs> Spreaker app. Well, I ain't got a Spreaker app yet, but those of you that's listening to the podcast, I apologize to you because there's feedback when I do my little, you are now listening to Giami Journey Radio, right? Because I haven't perfected the skill of turning off the mic, doing that. So y'all got to bear with me until we um, get all this mastered. So family today. I have some very sad news, but some celebratory type news, right? African openness to the tree of life. African openness to the tree of life. We are down to the last four. We made it through all the proverbs, and we hit all of the discussion points in almost all of them. We have four more. Four more. Um... Uh, discussion points to do from the way of ideas and symbols because I can't really call them proverbs but what um, 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 the ancestor uh, um, Erskine Peters was trying to do is to get us to really start realizing and thinking about the importance of symbols he said in the ways of ideas and symbols right you change the world through ideas so what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to retract and we're going to pull out the Giami Journey Workbook. So we're probably going, if, if we make it through all these, we will be moving to the Giami Journey um, Workbook, Tribal Quotes. We're going to be starting over, which is so appropriate, which is so appropriate. Family, we moving, we building, we, 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 we shaking and baking, we making, we building. I love it, right? So, um, so we made it. We already did this. We already did this one. Right, and I need y'all to understand, right? This is how long this is, right? This one is 90 pages of proverbs, right? 90 pages, right? Three proverbs on each page. It's done over a 90 day period, but we did one per week, one page per week. So we already finished this book. Then we did one to three proverbs. Out of this book, and that's over 40 some pages of proverbs with an average count of about six proverbs per page. So, you know, I mean, I just need y'all to understand, man, this is this is this 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 is some long term work that we have we, we invested in. Um, this some this some long term um um warriorship. Right, I'm, I'm a nation builder on the warrior path, right? I'm a nation builder on the warrior path because I understand that, you know, in building a nation, sometimes I got to put down the tools that I'm using to, to build the nation, right? Sometimes I have to take those tools and use them as weapons to defend the damn thing that I'm building, right? Because we got to understand, we don't have the luxury of some of our ancestors. We got to protect what, we got to protect what we're building, you know what I'm saying? Some of our ancestors had isolation. Some of our ancestors were left alone long enough so that they could get civilization moving. We are not, we don't have that, right? We are surrounded by howling wolves. The wolves are at the door and they want to, they want to attack and suck the blood out the carcass of what we call black America, what we call black folks, you know what I'm saying? And we have to understand that we have to protect why we build, right? It's raining and we have to provide cover for for our people. So we got to understand, man, this, 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 this is a rough road. It's a fun road and it's a rough road, right? What I mean by fun? Because the, the lessons that you learn and, and the true friendships you develop it are are incredible. Don't forget the healing aspect of our role. Oh, we're healers, right? We're healers. You know what I'm saying? And we had a responsibility. I mean, hell, you know what I'm saying? We had a responsibility to heal even when we may be sick sometimes. You know what I'm saying? 
So we're warriors, we're builders, and we healers. As um, uh, um, those that that term, Elder Wakesa, lays down when he does his workshop. Right, warrior, healer, and builders. That's what we do. We got to fight, build, and heal at the same time. So that's a bad. I'm, you know what I'm saying? You know, I got. I got the pistol in one hand, blasting away. See, that's a gangster movie. I got a pistol in one hand, blasting away, laying out the equations, and and and, and with this hand, I'm I'm building. You know what I'm saying? And, and 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 with the with my right foot, I'm putting the bandages on. You know what I'm saying? We got to do it all. You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to do it all. I got to switch. You know, because I might need the later bricks. With the, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing it all. We got to train ourselves. We have to start. We have to move back to a culture where we where we look at mastery as as a good thing. And before we get into the Proverbs family, we have to know when to say enough is enough. Brother Kwame says, speaking of which, what's your remedy for sore, possibly strep throat? Well, Always honey, <laughs> raw honey, raw honey. All right. Um, you can have some. Um, also, green tea is good. You know what I'm saying? Because the warmness will help kind of open it up. But the raw honey is real good. Honey is a real good. Um, is it, good for soothing. Um, it's good for healing. Um, it's antibacterial. It's antimicrobial. So it. Slide down, taste good, and feel good. All right? Um, then we also could look up some other stuff as well. You know what I'm saying? But but try, you know, and and, and Brother Kwame, keep keep a bottle of, uh, if you probably already got this, but keep a bottle of raw honey around, just just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's real good. And I know I know uh, with, with some of your medical conditions, you can't take too much of that. Right? But you need just a little bit to just get get the healing process started. You know what I'm saying? Because you're doing some of the other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, so. All right, family. All right, family. We are almost at the end. Oh, we have to learn to say. We have to learn when enough is enough. So, yesterday, as I told you, I'm riding. Well, I am going to go into that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's... We live in a culture that we teach our children and we have come up under the belief where you get... Okay, um, I get mine from HSU. Who, um, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, I'm still... They say theirs is, is from Ohio. But what we have to find is we have to find um, somebody in or near Columbus with beehives. Right? HSU say they get theirs from Ohio. So it's raw is what I use with the, with the ambrosia. Um, but I'm looking for a direct plug. You know what I'm saying? I need a, pl I need a honey plug. So if any, anybody out there that knows anybody that can be the plug for that honey. You know what I'm saying? I want to ship it in by the key. <laughs> I'll just, I'm serious. Shit, fuck it. I, my, I, I want to be able to do business directly with the bee man or bee woman. You know what I'm saying? Or be whatever you are. You know what I'm saying? I want to do the business directly. Right? But we need, family, listen, we need to know when to say enough is enough. And we need to start educating our children away from this whole money bullshit that we have been roped into, right? When we start placing money above everything, it's probably when everything starts going wrong with our community. You know what I'm saying? When we started placing money over everything. You know, I mean, you hear, you heard it in the songs in the 90s, and you still hear in the songs today. It's about the money, 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 money. Money over bitches. Mob. You know, we mob money over. Money over. 
Money is everything in a capitalist society. And, and, and that's what our elders thought that we need to learn. Brother, you don't need to go and be a teacher with your mathematical skills. You need to go and be an engineer so that you can make that money and really make a change in the community. You need to be a banker. Hell, you need to act. You need to play professional sports so that you can get that money. You need the money. We need money to change the community. Right now, we have a whole lot of money flowing into our community and it has not, matter of fact, shit has got worse. You know what I'm saying? We got more shit we fight over. We got more shit to fight over. Basically, that's what money brought. More shit to fight over. Right, and I, I was talking to my mom today, and she brought up a good point. She she told me she said, you know, it's crazy how much more black feet, black folks got. I said, what what you mean? She said we got more diseases. Like for example, we got the highest when it comes to cancer rates. We got the highest when it comes to AIDS rates. We got the highest. You know what I'm saying? We got the highest and the most of everything except when it comes to that money. I said, wow. Never thought about that. Money and that power. You know what I'm saying? Even though it's flowing through, for some reason we can't hold on to it. And I think because uh, we're, we're doing culturally inappropriate things. We have learned to value things that do not truly benefit our culture. So we have to start challenging ourselves to kind of remind ourselves to start pushing some of our young people into directions that they can actually build a better life and build their lives. You understand what I'm saying? Because, you know, this money thing is kind of, I mean, some of us know we got relatives that this whole money concept has fucked them up. They will sell you into slavery for money. And they say they love you. They'll shoot their mama for money. They'll kill their brother. We know motherfuckers like this. And the fact of the matter is that money has not brought any more peace into our community. I know a lot of y'all saying we ain't got money, but shit, we got more people right now with degrees than we have ever had. Degrees was, the education was supposed to bring us the peace and, and, and bring us the money, right? And we got that. And some of us are making as much money as some of our ancestors was making back in the 70s and the 60s. But it's the same figure, but it's not the same amount. And that's another, another discussion for another day. So today we are on the last chapter of the African openness to the tree of life family, you know. And I'm like, yo, I'm looking so forward to this Kwanzaa, man. Why? Because I honestly believe something's going to happen. I honestly believe that this may be um, the high winter season of change for us, at least here in Columbus. But we somehow or some way, we're going to be throwing our hat into the ring of power. Right? We're going to start making some power moves. We're going to start a strategic strategizing you know what i'm saying we're going to start forming something that's going to be able to truly represent what we need a lot of people are starting and i'm going back to what i was about to talk about the other day i was riding and i was listening to npr <clears throat> and I, I was i got kind of disheartened because on npr they had um a show about this new book coming out New, new book coming out called The Nomadic Nation I want y'all to listen to that the name of the book the title of the book was called The Nomadic Nation I want y'all to listen to this shit very clearly family right the name of the book was The Nomadic Nation and they weren't talking about no ancient world shit I just want y'all to understand right they, they're not talking about no ancient world shit. They're talking about today in American society where people 
have been priced out of America and can no longer afford to live in their homes. So they're now they're living in their cars or they're buying vans or they're converting their SUVs, taking the last little bit of their money, converting their SUVs so they can stealth, stealthily hide in their cars and sleep. You have whole markets that are taking advantage of these people. For example, Amazon. You know the Amazon warehouse that they, they're, they're advertising big time here in Ohio? We need to check it out because one of the work, one of the, some of the people in the workforce for Amazon are older people who have retired that live in their cars. So Amazon, as part of the package of them working there, provides them with space where they could park. Just say, I'm not making this shit up. I can't make this shit up. We have elders who are homeless. And we have a corporation that all of us in some form or fashion is using and benefiting from that is now using the elders as labor and providing them a place where they could sleep in their car. This is where we at right now, America. This, this, and, and, and what bothered me was this. If we don't start working right now, many of us may not even have a goddamn car to sleep in. I need y'all. I mean, it, this is the reality. We've been, we have literally been priced out of America. They say within the next 10 years, I think it's the next 10 years, the average black family, if there's any left, will be worth zero dollars. Family, they're not fucking with us. Y'all, we the only ones playing. All right, here we go. Let me go. African Open Street Alive, we're on the last chapter. Let me get through it. I'm, I'm going to bed. Let me drink my water. We're going to read through all of them. It is exactly... Four of them left, so we're going to knock them out. Lines are open. Anybody want to call in, feel free to hit me up. 614-556-4535. Um, Brian Andy says, look up bugging out. But bugging out, listen, bugging out ain't got shit to do with being homeless. You, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, the great concept, but the homeless shit, you can't bug out if you ain't got no home. You, you, you already out. <laughs> you already out. You know what I'm saying? Your ass stuck out in the cold. And, you know, and, and it's like family. This is, this is, this is the future they have for us. They have a, a Amazon, a, a Uber Amazon Lifestyle waiting for you. <laughs> well, not see, cause now Sister Jill say the truth. The plan for us is to be extinct. Well, they actually need labor. <laughs> so if you're not willing to work for a low price, yeah, you extinction for you. You know what I'm saying? But they need labor. Right, because as as you know, as machine based as they want the world to be, they always gonna need some people that's gonna be willing to get down and dirty and get down there and get it. Right, but you know, if we look at what's going on with Uber and we look at what's going on with Amazon and all the businesses that these type of corporations and I, you know, I I love it, but at the same time, I have to be worried because I understand this is a part of the strategy because they come in and they make everything so cheap. That, I mean, most of the shit that you buy in in an Amazon or on Amazon or or at Walmart's can't, can't be produced in America because it's too goddamn cheap. Um, Sister Jill say there are mulatto and other people of color to use. Ah, well, hey, all them might not be willing. You know what I'm saying? All them might not be willing. You got that? I mean, servants are servants. I don't give a fuck about your color. You know what I'm saying? They got tests for that. You know what I'm saying? They'll put another motherfucker in front of you that look like you, that might be even related to you, and be like, hey, boy, if you want to be with us, you got a simple choice. Either you could kill him, or we going to kill both of you. Just to see how loyal you are. You know what I'm saying? 
hell, after they watch some of us running around killing each other, I mean, hell, you know, shit, for all we know, the initiation is going on right now. <laughs> Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, this is Brother Hot Tim. And once again, we about to get it pop. We about to get it popping off. Let's get into these proverbs real quick. Let's get into these proverbs. The the hell was that? Paid this money for this damn speaker. And this one, this, even the speaker's taking breaks. Any human that can be used will will be... Any any human that can be used will including them. Oh yeah, oh man. Listen, family, we got to understand, and so we have to start preparing ourselves. We got to start preparing our children. We got to get people to start really realizing where true African wealth lie. True African wealth was never in the ground. True African wealth was never in the machines. True African wealth was in the relationships between us. In all actuality, when we really look at it, when you look at it and you try to break down what spirituality is, which most of these motherfuckers run around here screaming, they're spiritual, they can't really define this shit. You know what I'm saying? You know, we could use fancy words like ashe and and we could talk about the ethers and we could talk about the, you know, I mean, the, the, the zodiac signs. When it really comes down to people talking about what spirituality is, most people can't really talk about what spirituality is but what spirituality is is about relationships you want to know how spiritual somebody is check out their relationships hey quick test for your spiritual master what type of relationships do you have I have no relationships I've been meditating on a mountain for 15 years get the fuck up out of here what the fuck can you teach me what can you teach me about life if you've been sitting up meditating on a mountain for 15 years away from people what kind of motherfucking spiritual leader or spiritual master you ain't have to spirit you ain't have to master shit nigga you eating berries and shit the rest of the world is moving on you know what I'm saying True spirituality is about relationships. Your relationships to yourself, your relationship to yourself, your relationship to others, and your relationship to your ancestors and to the higher power. And the management of those relationships. That's spirituality, family. You know what I'm saying? So we go going to get all your rocks, get all your little symbols and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because we're about to break this shit down because we on the last part of the African openness to the tree of life. And I'm about, some of this shit's going to crack your head, family. I mean, our ancestors was, I mean, our ancestors was light years ahead of this shit. It's almost, it, you know what? Like I said, some of us, we need to go and spark some of the creativity in some of our kids because like, I'm kind of too tired to kind of write this. We need to write, this the way we need to write the history. The shit we going through, our ancestors planned this for us to test us because we was bored because we had already mastered everything. So the only motherfuckers that we possibly couldn't beat was ourselves. So we needed a proxy and the proxy we used was West Asians and we propped them up to run the world to, and, and, and cause them to make us forget who the fuck we was. And the ultimate goal of the game is for us to get back on top because we was bored. You know what I'm saying? We've been doing this shit for 50,000 years. We got bored. We needed something to do. Here we go. Right? Family. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, man. I'm trying to tell you. Because that's the way they wrote their history. You, y'all you running around looking for facts. History ain't never really been about facts. It's about the motherfucker who survived to tell a story. That's what it's about. I'm sorry. I could be wrong. I got some real good historian friends out there that's probably madder than the motherfucker right now. <laughs> well, you know. I mean... You know, you know, let's say 50,000, let's do it, you know, I, yeah, about, about 50,000, you know what I'm saying? I mean, but yeah, you know, you're going to have people argue. So even what, it, shit, even if I say 3,000, I'm going to have motherfuckers arguing. You know what I'm saying? I got some people who tell me that the world is only 6,000 years old. So I, I can't be precise. I got to watch what I say. I got to be politically correct because I'm going to hurt somebody's spiritual feelings. I'm going to hurt um, somebody, you know what I'm saying, I got niggas trying to move so far away from who the fuck we are, you know what I'm saying, I got, I got, I got, I got uh, Native American niggas, I got, um, 
I got Hispanic niggas, I got Latino niggas, um, um, uh, I got Israeli niggas, you know what I'm saying, and then you got ones that don't like being called is they got Hebrew niggas, you know what I'm saying, I got Moorish niggas, lesser, you know, Moorish niggas, lesser niggas, you know what I'm saying, I got all shapes and sizes, comedic niggas, and some of them out there too, you know what I'm saying, and just niggas that's just out there, you know what I'm saying, so we got all this shit to kind of, we got to work through, you know what I'm saying? Maybe this might be the show that get me kicked off of Facebook for a while. You know what I'm saying? I, you, I, 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 you know, I, I need to do, I need to do something controversial or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But the point, the point I'm trying to make is that a lot of us we run so far and so fast away from who we are that we we could never get free. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of hope, I kind of hope we building. Excuse me. In other words. We've been at this since we've been ancient, ancient niggas. <laughs> I mean, it might have been ancient niggas that set up the game. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I mean, you know, you know how, you know how, you, 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 you know how, you know, in a sense, how spiteful some of us could be, you know what I'm saying? And how we could hold grudges for a whole lifetime. You know what I'm saying? Imagine. Imagine if you understood that you reincarnate and you just carried a grudge for a long time and you had the ability and the wisdom to know what was coming and to set some shit up to get to somebody that you was mad at back. You know what I'm saying? We might be paying an ancient debt to somebody. Somebody might have been mad. You know what I'm saying? And they just play, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy out here, right? But I'm just I'm just talking right now. Let's get into um, the folk tales. All right? I mean, not the folk tales. Let's get into... The uh, Proverbs. So I'm going to read the Proverbs four first. It's four of them. This is the last four Wayne Proverbs. These are more of thoughts. It's from the chapter for those that have the book, The Way of Ideas and Symbols. And like I was saying, the, this, this, this ancestor wanted us to learn the power of ideas and symbols because it's not guns that win revolution, right? You need, before you get to the guns, before you get to the changes that people want to make, you got to change the, the ideas and the uses of symbols by the people. All right? You have to clarify the ideas. What is the idea of the revolution? What is that virus? Because that, that, that idea is like a virus. And if we construct the idea properly, it'll jump from person to person to person. We, we, we almost own it in the conscious laboratory. You know what I'm saying? We almost own it, right? Because... This bug we got is not an excitable type of virus. You know, it's the type of virus that just sit in you for a while. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, you kind of got the healing. You know what I'm saying? I can't call it an ailment, but you kind of got it. Like some of my kids got it, right? Some of my sons got it. You know what I'm saying? But it's not. They're not all the way. They don't have all of the symptoms of, of consciousness yet, right? So we need to kind of tweak the idea of virus we got to tweak them and mimic ideas that we put out there. You know what I'm saying? So that we could go on get uh, get this movement right. Um, Sister Jill says, to clarify, I know that it's going to make somebody mad, made no disrespect, only love and all respect to our ancestors. Word. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm, I'm about having fun. And if you're super sensitive, go somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's enough... Motherfuckers out there that's stressing themselves out and mad and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm mad. I'm joyful. I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling myself. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, shit. I'm 49. You know what I'm saying? I got more years behind me than I got in front of me. So anybody that got beef with how I do shit, bye. All right. So shouts out to Sister Jill. Shouts out to Ayanda Afrique. Shouts out to Miss Stephanie M. Jackson. Shouts out to Brother Kwame. Um, who else is on here? Shouts out to Addison Sinna. Um, of course, uh, let's see. What else? Oh, shouts out to Brother Kevin Sanchez. I appreciate everybody stopping in and visit. But now, as I promise, let's get into this. Let's get into this. these Proverbs. Y'all ready? Name Proverbs. They're long. All right, let's get into it. Y'all ready? So, here we go. I 
ideas and symbols represents discriminations categories these may not always be positive in motive or effect in the greater in the greatest sense however ideas and symbols work toward the exercise of the mind of the spirit of the being in their greatest form they do not allow stagnation because they promote continuous generation. This is the true exercise pointed to by yoga, for instance. That's one. That's the first one. Uh, Brother Kwame said, oh man, why y'all up in your feelings? <laughs> I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling myself. Hey, hey, and hey, family, we got to laugh, you know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, seriously, if you really look, if you really look at the pit, listen, uh, yesterday I was talking with some young ladies in, in, in the class, and I tried to paint a picture for them so they could see. So I started with the hurricane. I told some of y'all this this morning. I started with the hurricane and how help is getting to those people so slow. They, so they kind of demonstrate, and we don't really give a fuck about you people of African descent. And, you know, we, we'll get, when we, we'll, shut up. When we get there, we get there, and you better be grateful. Because that's this This is the attitude in which, the, how they deal with us. Shut, you, when you get to hell, that's when you get it. This is the attitude they deal with us. We're screaming, so it don't hurt that damn bad. It's only been seven days and y'all complaining. You know what I'm saying? It's only been 400 years. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get it right. Give us time. Always rushing something. Yo, niggas, y'all don't, you're not grateful. How dare you want to take a knee when they singing a the national anthem? Or how dare you cry for help when you're hurt? How dare you? You should be grateful. Because we saved you. We saved you. Yes, we did. Well, anyway, paint that picture, right? So I go through the, the hurricane, and then um, I talk about how the police have been doing and how it's happening on video, and they could get away with murdering us. Then the prison population and the, the, the stuff going out there. So I said, look, I want y'all to see the picture that's being painted here of you and for you. What is it saying about you? What is it saying to the rest of the world about you? So you got the high prison population and there's a lot of violence. And then we look at some of the stuff that's going on YouTube that's prominent about black folks on YouTube. And we look at it. We look at what's going on on Facebook. With, with black. What's the picture that's being painted of you? And then I pulled out, a, then we then we discussed an article that I had shared with them. That, and the question was, why do poor black kids continue to do worse on standardized tests? So look at the picture. Look at the picture. I want you to understand this is about Ohio. Who is it about? Who is it about, ladies? It's about black kids in Ohio. And who are black kids? We are. Okay, I want to make sure that you include yourself in that. Boom. What is the picture? What's the picture being painted? Last but not least, on the news last night when I was coming from a meeting at the Sheeshaw, the NPR, I put posted up on my timeline. Y'all can read it for yourself. NPR. Did a report. What well, was actually uh, the the English BBC uh, talked about a report that stated that the chosen music, the most listened to music by psychopaths, is basically hip hop and R and B. Stripping away all the humanity. Eventually, what they're going to start seeing with us is purely zombies. Zombies that's coming to eat up resources because your children can't learn. And you eating up all of the money, all of our tax money is, is going to imprison you. And your welfare, your welfare families and shit, they're starting to see, they're programming others to start seeing us. And some of us are starting to see it within ourselves. We're starting to see zombies. I don't even see human beings. Let me move on to the next one. Y'all know y'all got to keep me keep me focused, family. Every now and then, somebody the 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 the, the safety word in our relationship, safety word, pull up. Y'all got to type it, pull up. 
all right? Ideas are made to fill voids. This is number two. They attempt the ultimate, they, they attempt ultimately to fill the void of human knowledge. The ancient Egyptians or Chemites held that things are the reflection of the archetypal or eternal ideas so great in scope that our human minds do not yet possess the sophistication or magnitude to apprehend fully these archetype, archetypal or eternal ideas in their true essence. We are only capable of grasping a reflection and not even all of that. They held especially if we attempt to apply too much human analysis. Listen, too much human analysis in this acknowledgement. They construct, um, um, hold on. Especially if we attempt to apply too much human analysis. In, these, in this acknowledgement, they constructed a system of hieroglyphs symbolic ideas expressing simultaneously a degree of knowledge apprehended as well as expressing the ineffability of total knowledge. Nevertheless, they found the degrees they apprehended, if not fulfilling, certainly stimulating. That's a mouthful. But I'm going to for those, you call in 614-556-4535 if you think you can break this shit down. Because I'm break, I, I'm going to tear that, I'm tearing that shit up. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to attack it like a Simba on a zebra. You know what I'm saying? Because he said a mouthful there. But, but, if you understand it, you understand really what we're dealing with. Last but not least. In its own special way, engagement with ideas and symbols can be the elixir of life. Following ideas and symbols may, because it can become an eternal process of alternation and generation, be the way or road to immortality itself. And that, family, is the last one. And that one right there is the key to immortality. This brother closed his, I'm going to say, this is his magnum opus with the key to immortality. He ended the book by giving you the method of staying young, the method, not just staying young, immortality, family. So, all right, those out there, should I do the first one, the second one, or the third one first? Come on. I'm waiting for y'all. I'm going to drink some water. Type it in. Type it in. I already pulled up, Jill. I mean, uh, Miss Jill, I pulled up. Shouts out to uh, my nephew, Troy Reed. Thank you for joining us. Uh, one, two, or three. Which one y'all want to start with? Because I don't look like nobody calling in, so I'm about to, I'm about to dive deep. All right, nobody called in. All right, I ain't just running my mouth. Uh, the Spreaker channel is on. Come on now. One, two, or three. Just type in a number. Let's go. Because it does a slight delay. I need a little bit more water, but I got to save some for tomorrow because we got the toast. And I ain't got, you know. One, two, or three. Come on now. Three. Oh, Allende want that secret to immortality. All right, let's start with that one. It, in its own special way, engagement with ideas and symbols can be the elixir of life. Now, how do you engage ideas and symbols? Hmm? You work with them, with your mind. Now, check this out. One of the things I noticed when I was growing was that when my elders in my immediate family started to do this thing called retire, they started to lose their way. They started to lose their health. You understand what I'm saying? When they retired, their energy levels dropped, right? Because at that point in time, the idea that was being promoted to the people was, right? 
the idea of being promoted to the people was that your purpose in life was the work. So when I retired, that means that my purpose in life was done. So a lot of our elders started to fade away because their purpose in life had been taken away. And what did that, how was that purpose in life represented for them? Because we need to actually, we should have did number two first because number two kind of gives us the tools so that we can really look at symbols and ideas and see how they really affect us, right? So now, when I'm working my, when I'm working with a principle or a purpose or, or, or something like that, I'm actually working with it in my mind. So when I have a purpose, right? It helps me stay energetic. It helps me stay young. It helps me move towards a sense of immortality, a, a sense of untouchability. This is why, right? This is why somebody can actually strap a bomb to themselves, run into a room and blow that motherfucker up. Because the idea is so strong. The idea has moved them to a level of believing in the fact that regardless of what happens to this physical form, they will continue on forever because they have latched on to an idea and a symbol. So when we latch on to healthy ideas and symbols, we promote health in our life. He says in here that ideas and symbols can be the elixir not the drink. You know what I'm saying? Not the elixir of life. Elixir has certain healing qualities. When we start learning how to work with ideas, real ideas, ideas that have been generated for us, ideas that have been left for us by our ancestors, we we plug into a power source that has been around for thousands of years, which means that we can move towards immortality now a lot of people want to want to fuck with the immortality piece far as the human body right you can stay energetic all the way into your last moments on this on this planet right because you know for me immortality in the human body is not immortality that's sort of like um that's sort of like uh, uh imprisonment without parole you see what i'm saying you, you locked in prison, you safe, you can look out and see the rest of the world, but you can't really get involved. And there's a lot of fuckery going on inside your body, especially if you're eating all types of crazy shit. So it's sort of just, it's just like being in a jail, right? Because there's a certain point in time, there's a certain level that you get with ideas and symbols where you really start to understand that this body, as powerful as it is, as marvelous as it is, it's a tool. It's a tool that's designed to help build you up and shoot you out into the universe, family. Ideas and symbols give us something to start building the mental energy, it's to, to build the spiritual energy, energy, to build the emotional energy, to help sharpen the intuition. And also, if we're using them right, to help energize the body. So that we can move and develop the energy and power generating generation within ourselves so that we can move towards the immortality. Listen, in its own way, engagement with ideas and symbols can be the elixir to life. And it's not just sitting up there looking at them. It's a matter of engaging with them. Engaging. You know what I'm saying? When two people hook up and they're about to get married, they don't say that they we kick. No, we engaged. Engage is deeper than just it just you just having to relate engage you engage with the ideas you rise with ideas you lay down and go to sleep and these ideas are moving around in you you have the symbols that are active and you are involved with the symbols and from these things from these things an energy that will compare that that will that will propel you into mortality is developed because you become Attached with the idea. Now, in Giami, we talk about the three levels of learning. And a lot of people don't, you know, they, they can't grasp it, right? Because it's just cute to be able to say, what's the three levels of learning? Three levels of learning. Memorization, intelligence of the mind, intelligence of the heart. Now, what is intelligence of the heart? Now, first, let's go. 
memorization is anybody could do it. I tell y'all that all the time. Man, you know what I'm saying? You almost anybody can memorize shit. This is this is the highest level that at least they got for a majority of the population out here. You learn to memorize shit. This is what this test is about. This is what the whole standardized test is about. Then you have a little bit deeper thinking with intelligence of the mind, where you are able to take ideas and you're able to take these ideas and work with these ideas and make these ideas your own. Right, but the highest level of learning in Giame is when it become intelligence of the heart, where you and the information become one. You don't have to speak it because people could see it on you. Right, Sister Jill Jackson says, ideas, symbols, symbols, principles, purpose, power equals immortality. Use body to propel the spirit. All right, let's go on. Following ideas and symbols may, because it can become an internal, an eternal process of alternation and generation, be the way to the road uh, to immortality itself. It says, an eternal process, eternal process of alternation and generation. How do we transmit ideas from generation to generation, family? And once you are invested in ideas, how, you know what I'm saying, you become part of the idea. So part of your immortality comes with you engaging with the ideas of the culture engaging with the symbols of the culture so as the ideas of the culture are passed on so are you you dig so that's where the immortality come from I mean I, I mean people make it so complicated and they just want to see because the problem comes when we just want to um, immortalize one part of us I want to. I want to make the body immortal. That's not immortality. That's a long life. Like I said, that's being stuck in one place for a long time. The ultimate goal is to be able to transcend from the state that we are in now, intuitionally, mentally. Emotionally, spiritually, and physically, and maintain the information and maintain the consciousness and move from this into the next state. That's called becoming a conscious ancestor. That's 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 being that that's being instilled as an ancestor. See, because a lot of our people, because we don't develop this energy, because we don't really attach to ideas that are really life affirming, we are not attaching to those ideas. Once we make our transition, we are totally confused and we become lost. So we're kind of stuck in in a world between between a um you know it, it, we, we're stuck in between we stuck in between worlds. We can't totally make the transition because we don't realize that we we, we haven't transcended yet. We 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 got, we don't realize that we left one world. We don't we don't understand what's going on because we're not conscious. I can't remember shit. So we got a lot of ancestors that's trapped in between worlds. This is one of the reasons we start. I started doing a daily toast because I know some of my ancestors may be may be stuck. Because when we mourn, when we when we cry about our ancestors, when we speak about our ancestors, we set up a beacon for them so that they can start, so that they can start plugging in a sense, plugging back in and start remembering. Some of the key ideas that they learn. If they learn Christian ideas, then the experience that they're going to have on that other side is going to be Christian. If they had that that Muslim identity, then they need to be plugging into them and on the other side. But then those of us that are conscious. Oh. See, because this is what's powerful about our people, family. We understand. We understand and we give our ancestors power and permission to affect reality. 
This means that if once some of us, some of us right now that are in existence right now because we're coming into this knowledge, some of us are going to be able to directly communicate with some of the young people that's coming up now. That's how powerful some of us will be when we move on. Because we're leaving here conscious. We're leaving here awake. We, are, we already know that most of the shit that we're going through right now is a dream. It's a fucking illusion. And once we transcend it, we're going to be able to affect it. This is why I love when Marcus Garvey said, when I return, I will return with 100 million Africans in whirlwind and in fire or something like that. You know what I'm saying? We got to understand, family. Oh. But no, we, you know, we too busy to plug in, right? We too busy working for these motherfuckers, building their world, rather than taking time to build our world. This is why I say two, number two for us is cooperation, but also number two is the amount of time that you need to spend two hours within every 24-hour period on working on you. Two hours getting back in tune with who you supposed to be. Family? Oh, man. Um, Brother Allende Afrik, the master drummer, says that's why our music is under attack. You got them right. Because with mu oh, man, dude. Oh, my God. They got, I mean, music had, music, music is the founder, is, 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 is one of the foundational building blocks of culture. If you start fucking that up, you know what I'm saying? This, and this is kind of why I started at the beginning of this. Sometimes we got to know. When they say enough is enough because the shit that they're doing with the music right now can't be called nothing but dem demonic. Actually, I don't even like using the term demonic because if we really, if y'all really broke down what demonic mean, most of y'all would be fucked up for the rest of the day. You know what I'm saying? So we won't even get into that. So it's totally negative. You know what? But I come from, I come from a tradition of uh, transmutation. I'm an alchemist. I'm a, I'm a magician. Which means that with the proper study and with the proper power up, I'm able to transfer, transform what's bad for my people into what's good for my people. This is where we fuck up up at, up at family. We want to draw these lines. And we want to be like them. Let them have their lines. Let them have their reality. We got to understand, right? Heru and Seth. What is the story about? Heru is one side, set is another. All right? Some of us take sides. But y'all do realize that Set had some, some, some large temples in Kemet, don't you? That Set was a, a deity that was taken care of in Kemet. Y'all do realize that, right? Right? So you had two religious organizations beefing with each other. But in the end, when they had to go to and stand before um, Tahuti, the God of Wisdom. Set was not killed. Set was made to serve Ra and put at the front of the boat that is the sun that's going across the sky. And his job was to fight the serpent of confusion. Did y'all hear what I said? My ancestors know how to take what was formed against us and transform it into something to work for us. I'm just waiting for some of us to be bold enough to do that shit. See, because it's like you, I mean, we got we, we got people playing with this shit. I, I don't have time to, I, I, I never had time to play with it. I never had the luxury to play with it or take advantage of it, right? Because I was surrounded with people that would check me and I never wanted to be a hypocrite. Never. Right? You know what I'm saying? I had elders in my life that I cared about enough and cared that I had enough respect for and enough humbleness for that could check me. Up to this day, could check me. It's shit right now that I don't want to do that if an elder, <laughs> and they know who they are, those ones, they know who they are. If they made a request, I got to do this shit. And that means that if some of you niggas needed to be laid down and the request was made, I would have to either do it or make it so. Ain't that what they say on Star Trek? Make it so. You know what I'm saying? Make it so. 
Y'all got to understand, family. That's some of the stuff, that's some of the shit we missing. Some of us done got we we feel that we done made it, we done feel that we done got out, you know, so so we step beyond the symbols and shit. Right? Eldership is a symbol. You know, so respecting the elders is not about you respecting that individual, respecting that person. You're respecting the symbol of the culture. You don't understand that when you disrespect the elder, you disrespecting the culture. But brother, I tell my elders don't under that don't mean you got to be disrespectful. In the Giami system, we have a ranking system, right? And there are younger people that have higher rank than older people. Now, the younger person is in charge, but that younger person still has the responsibility to show that other one respect. But in the same token, that older person has to respect the system enough to know that because this individual is at a higher level than them, that they have to listen and follow what they say. So it's a double-edged sword. So disrespecting the youth <laughs> it's disrespecting the culture. But uh, which culture is a combination of symbols and ideas? I said music is the found is the one of the foundation. What is music? Music is a symbol. Music is an idea in motion. Actually, music is when an idea, right, is is when an idea and a symbol work together. So when Allende is playing the drum, Allende is an idea. The symbol is the drum. When the drum and Allende come together, they make music. B jazz is an idea. When he comes together with that keyboard, which is a symbol, they make music. All right? All right, so let's go back. Let's back up. Let's back up. Um, so I'm going to number two because I ain't going to hold you up. Damn, it's been an hour. They ran in my goddamn mouth. All right, and we're going to finish this book. Ideas are made to fill voids. They, they attempt to ultimately to fill the void of human knowledge. All right? So we know ideas are made to fill voids. Now, nature abhors a void. Nature will always try to fill a void. So if we are not putting information into the void of our children's mind, nature and the enemy will find something to put in it. Family, we have to give our children missions. Right. We have to give them ideas that they have to bite on and wrestle with and struggle with and get frustrated with. Why do you keep saying that? You can't have your cake and eat it, too. That, you know, some of us, uh, some of us had the fortunate um, experience of having um, an elder in our life that just had had something that they used to just just would say. And it would get on your damn nerves. Like I had a big I had an older brother. Mazia Patachete, right? Mazia will always say, one good thing. He said, uh, too much one thing, good for nothing. He was from Jamaica. I'm like, nigga, and he will all. why do you keep saying that shit? You know what I'm saying? I couldn't hear him in my 20s. Oh, stop saying that shit. Then we separated in the late 20s and the 30s hit. In the mid thirties, said, and I really started understanding what Mazia meant when he said, <laughs> "Too much of one thing, good for nothing." He planted an idea in his little brother's minds. Most of us are not taking time to plant ideas in young people's minds. We got to start planting those ideas. All right, there go Jackie making up new words. Dang, I dang. All right. Dang. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sister Jackson, Miss Jill says, remember who you are and use our power. Hell, always. Knock, you know, knock a motherfucker out. We sort of like Mike Tyson in his prime, but we just don't know it yet. Uh, Mazia, shout out. Word. 
Um, the ancient Egyptians held that things are the reflection of an archetypal or eternal ideas so great in scope that our human minds do not yet possess the sophistication or magnitude to apprehend fully these archetypal or eternal ideas in their true essence. So, oh my God. So ancient, our ancestors believed that things are a reflection of the eternal essence. So what we, what we are perceiving is what we are able to perceive of actual reality. So really, we're not even seeing real reality. Our ancient ancestors believed that we could not take real the the the, the full thing. So the the I the, the 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 things that we have around us are just basically reflections. It's sort of like um it's sort of like the shadows dancing in front of us. And because we're able to put something up in front of it, it is is a ref it, it becomes a shadow within the reality that we exist. For example, if those of you that really study study um, like the the Bible, you know what I'm saying? You read the Bible. Do you remember that um, people really could never really go between before the holies of, of holies, and if they went before the holies of holies and they were not prepared for the holy of holies, when the veil was lifted, they would be burnt to a cinder. That's because they was facing reality. When an individual is not prepared, is not trained, is not initiated, is not put in the right mind state to really accept when they see reality, you go crazy if it does not destroy you. Right? This is why our ancestors had initiations because an individual has to be prepared so that they can really start be introdu being introduced to who they really are because hell we haven't even faced the reality of who we really are you know what I'm saying I mean because we, we we play with the words we play with the ideas but we have not really embraced the ideas of who we really are it's uncomfortable I got to dim my shit down so that I don't feel or make people feel out of place when I'm at my workplace I mean, some y'all y'all know what the fuck I mean. You got to you you got to bring your energy down. Hell, you can have a prayer session, a meditation session, and be floating on air and, and all the way until you get to the office, and you got to tone that shit down. Cause you know if you go in there with that type of energy, you ain't gonna have a job. We are not. Our ancestors believe. Well, I ain't gonna say believe. Our ancestors teach us. That we have not, we are not capable at this point in time of being able to see reality. And that's basically what the initiation school was about. It was about teaching us and preparing us so that we could be taken into the Holy of Holies and be shown reality. That's when the magic started happening. And every now and then, some of us, through our own practices, we get a glimpse of reality and it might make you laugh it might make you cry you know what I'm saying I remember I, you know, I tell this story often I was at the um, Sundance with, with the Native American family and um, and those that have never been to the Sundance they will form a gigantic sacred circle I mean the, well let's just say this they built a village for the time that they were in ceremony so when you came, there would be nothing near. And they would take this barren land and build a village for that week or however long that ceremony was going to go on. Then those individuals who had been preparing would go before the elders and they would go into a sweat lodge and they would go into the ceremony mode and the fasting would start. And then a giant circle would be made and they would start the sun dance when the sun rise and they would rock, they would dance from sunrise to sunset and some of them would 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 be pierced the whole time they would be dancing now there's certain ceremonies that happen during the sun dance right and, and anyway there was a there was a certain ceremony where people was called 
to the center. And um, my older brother, um, Elder Albino, took me into the center with them. Uh, he went, because Albino, Albino old school. I don't, brother I tell him, you invited to come um, and, 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 and partake in the center. But you got to come four times before I allow you to dance. And I'm sticking to that. I went one time. Well, actually, I got to complete a four-time cycle. So now I got to start over. So I got to go four years in a row before I'm able to dance, according to brother, to um, um, uh, Albino. Right? And that's, that's who I was brought in up under. And that's whose rules I got to follow. Damn. But you know, that that's just kind of rough. But anyway. I was in the middle of the circle, and I, I start watching all the stuff going on, and the reality of what was going on hit me, and I was surrounded by people who were sacrificing their bodies, sacrificing their money and resources, sacrificing their time and suffering. For, for, for the world. Um, one brother um, asked for permission to 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 suffer in a special way for a young girl that was confined to a wheelchair, and and I and, and I'm seeing all this going on around me, and I'm standing in the middle of the circle, and I started to cry. And I know some of y'all won't understand that. Because when that reality comes, when that reality comes, it is so beautiful and so powerful that it's going to overwhelm you in some form or fashion. And if it don't overwhelm you, <laughs> it's not reality. You just seeing another shadow. So our ancestors believe that we are only seeing a small piece of everything that's out here. We're not, when we look out, and we're, we're not really even seeing. Our, we're not even seeing the universe. We're seeing. We're seeing a small portion of what is the universe, or what we think is the universe. Um, the ancient Egyptians held that things are the reflection of an archetypal or eternal ideas. Archetypal is that you know, in the sense the, that that God piece, that original. The original piece. We are not seeing original. We are seeing a copy of 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 a copy. Right. And the copies are other people's conceptions because many of us are not even seeing. Seeing what we think we're seeing. We're seeing what other people's told told us we're supposed to be seeing. Education. My fault. My fault, Jack. Schooling. Um, well, you can see it on the line, on the timeline. Um, uh, Allende, Miss Jackie says, "What's up?" Um, so, um, so you know what I'm saying that that whole reality. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Guess who just came in the door? I said it before. I never let the mic magnetize me no more, brother Dame Lee. All right, family. So. The ancient Egyptians held that things that are a reflection of archetypal or eternal ideas so great in scope that our human minds do not yet possess the sophistication or magnitude to apprehend fully these archetypal. Now, I want to say this, because a lot of people might get offended because our, our ancestors said our minds weren't sophisticated enough, but this is the key that we need to make sure our children understand and that we start understanding. You can't learn without being humble family humbleness and learning go hand in hand see we got to understand that our ancestors developed a system of uh, apprenticeship you couldn't go into a printer you couldn't become somebody's apprentice thinking that you knew more than them that's not apprenticeship nigga you i mean you you need to find you need to go elsewhere you know what i'm saying I, what the hell you need me for you got all the skills to survive bye an apprenticeship is where you would find yourself a teacher and you would learn from that teacher the skill that would get you through life. And this was the this was 
the basis of the education system. So when we started the priesthood, the priesthood would be, I would become an apprentice up under a priest. That priest would become the master and I would become the student. But many of us can't accept that type of relationship. We can't accept that type of relationship. And our kids can't expect, accept that type of relationship because we have been taught that that is not how it should be. We are, we are reflecting and holding on to somebody else's way of being and they don't even do it like that. That's what they show you. That's what they show you in the media. Like, for example, they always show like when you look at black, I mean, really, look at, look at us in the movies, right? Very little backstory. But this motherfucker is just naturally good at everything. I mean, we got to be aware of this shit because what this is telling our kids is, damn, if you're not naturally good, you might as well give up. Motherfuckers don't know how hard you practice all year and day. They think that you just woke up one day and your ass was able to play the drums. They don't realize, Brother Dame, that your ass spent a lot of time in that mirror talking to yourself to get them rhymes up, right? They don't understand the suffering that you've been through, right? To be able to kick what you got. Jackie, they don't understand that how many times you picked up that pen. Sister Jill, they don't understand what you was doing when you was beating yourself up trying to get through and get that PhD. See, our kids, they, they're being fed this bullshit that motherfuckers are just naturally good and we supposed to be just naturally good and if you're not just naturally good you're not gonna get it you don't have a natural talent we all done heard that shit before and we need to crush that shit when they start saying that to them fuck that they practice see because in order to practice you need a coach and in order to have a coach you gotta be humble be humble sit down be humble. You know what I'm saying? And being humble ain't got nothing to do with being pumped. Family. I mean, we. I mean, really. We got a long... I mean, it ain't hard. But we got a lot of shit we got to correct. See, because I'm just looking at... I mean, just... I'm just looking at the relationship between some of the students that I got and teachers. Oh, my God. Lack of respect. No humbleness. You can't tell some of these young people. Shit. This is why rights of pass was so important. Real rights of pass. This shit that we doing now, and I know a lot, I'm going to scare a lot of people with this. This shit we doing now, mm-mm, mm-mm. You know how you stop a, a teenager from going through the ungrateful phase? You put them in a situation where they miss every goddamn thing that they ever had for a long enough period of time that when they come out that shit, they are a different person. They got the humbleness intact. They got the gratefulness intact. Now, we got motherfucking teenagers that's coming up. They got hair on their face. They got hair under their arms. They got hair on their private parts. And they can do everything that you can do. And nobody better not say nothing to them. Now, some of our young people, we need to take them out. And they need to go to a sun dance. And they need to help build the village. They need to go to a sweat lodge. And they need to help build the sweat lodge. They need to go out and stay out in the woods for a long time as we hustle and eat together. And they learn how to follow orders. And we need to reinforce that shit on a daily basis with them until they get it. Because you can't learn shit if you're not humble. You can't be coached if you're not humble. You can't become a master if you're not humble. Only in the movies. Only in the movies. Check this out. I mean, because this type of shit they tell us. Luke Skywalker becomes a Jedi in three movies, which covered a span of about 10 years. He become a master Jedi in 10 years in a system that took you at least 40 to master. Give me a fucking break. This is, so the, the, the part of that speed culture, you know, you got to happen fast. So, all right, let me finish and I'm done. Um, cause we on our last one and we going to start the next book. <sighs> we are only capable of grasping a reflection and not even all of that. They held, especially if we attempt to apply to too much human analysis. See, human analysis is good. Don't get me wrong, but too much of it stops us from our growth. Cause with human analysis, we, we try to equate, we try to do the equations of God, and you can't do the equations of God with human analysis. 
So all, a lot of the variables that you think that you going that you think you understand are always going to be flipped. They always have to be a sense of chance. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That, that, that's how you know when you're on a divine mission. Because if you on a mission and you already know everything that's gonna happen, nigga, you not on a mission. You're not on a mission. You on a trip. Right? You got an itinerary. You on a trip. This is why people don't understand why I get mad when they when they ask me, uh, what you gonna be doing? Uh, or what you doing when I ain't gonna, gonna be doing now? I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna be doing now. Because my life is an adventure. I live a life that a lot of people wish they could. I ain't got no money, but I get to enjoy myself. I done been blessed to move all over this planet. All over this country. I live an adventure. Right? So I don't know what's coming. My I'm my life divine. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I might be raising the dead in an hour. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I know that kind of fucks some of y'all, but that's cool. But my brothers, my sisters out there this week, y'all understand what I'm saying. All right, let's move on. We almost done, family. We almost done. Um, wow. <sighs> in this acknowledgement. They constructed a system of hieroglyphs, symbolic ideas expressing simultaneously, check this out, a degree of knowledge apprehended as well as expressing the ineffability of total knowledge. So our ancestors were so dope. <laughs> we had, we developed a, a language, a symbolic system that can affirm what we did know but left enough, uh, left unknown so that no matter how much we knew, we always knew that we had to learn more. How the? What? Hold on. Let, what? The ancient Egyptians held that things that are a reflection of archetypal or eternal ideas are so great in scope that our human minds do not yet possess the sophistication or magnitude to apprehend fully these archetypal or eternal ideas in their true essence. We are only capable of grasping a reflection and not even all of that. They held especially if we attempt to apply too much human analysis. In this acknowledgement, they constructed a system of hieroglyphs Symbolic ideas expressing simultaneously a degree of knowledge apprehended as well as expressing the ineffability of total knowledge. You can understand these at a certain level, but understand that the growth with them will go on eternally. Now, that's another key to immortality. Always being a student. Always being a student. Realizing that every time you open up a book, you learn something new. Never settling for old ideas that are way past their time. Always looking for new ways to breathe life into them. Stretching your mind. Stepping outside the box. All right. All right, so let's go and read the first one. Ideas and symbols represent discriminations, categories. These may not always be positive in motive or effect. In their greatest sense, however, ideas and symbols work toward the exercise of the mind. Ideas, symbols work towards the exercise of the mind, of the spirit, of being. In their greatest form, they do not allow stagnation because they promote continuous generation. So true ideas. Now, family, check this out. Because this is how you measure. So let's say you with you you hook up with the latest group. Right? Right? If the ideas stop at a certain level, if there's a certain level where you can stop, you know they're not plugged into the eternal. Because ideas are constantly generated. Ideas and symbols are, are about exercising the mind. Constant movement of the mind. Constant growth of the mind. If there's a place where you can stop, you ain't found the truth. 
Let's go back to that one. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -mm. Ideas and symbol represents discrimination categories. This may not always be positive in motive or effect. So now this goes into some of that moral, some of that moral shit that some of us be struggling with, because we think all ideas have to be righteous. But we got to remember, we had a Heru, we also had a Set. Heru might feel bad about assassination, but Set be like. Right? I'm just saying. All right. We come from a dualistic culture. This whole righteous shit, a lot of us are using this, including myself, to hide from the action. We're using the moral obligation. Um, Brother Wakasa talks about that. He's down in Atlanta. Y'all need that. If you're not in Atlanta, you need to find Brother Wakasa because he breaks that shit down. Where a lot of motherfuckers is hiding behind this moral shit to keep from getting out here in these streets. In the greatest sense, however, ideas and symbols work toward the exercise of the mind, of the spirit, of being. In the greatest form, they do not allow stagnation. So if you are hooked up with a group that is stagnant, there's no growth mentally. You know what I'm saying? Because financially, as black folks, we always going to have some, some stuff that look like stagnation. Once, but once we start plugging in and, and we start building these leagues or these governments and getting them together, we're going to get the money flowing, right? They're uh, stagnation because they promote continuous generation. Continuous generation. Ideas. True ideas and symbols. Culturally appropriate ideas and culturally appropriate symbols are in a constant generation mode. They get you in a constant, you're generating shit. You're, what, what is general? You're creating shit. Energy is moving through your body. You wake up in the morning, you can't wait to get to, to do what you want, what you was born to do. I'm about to go to bed, family. <sighs> because they promote continuous generation, this is the true exercise pointed to by yoga, for instance. Yoga is the movement of ideas and symbols. It's ideas and symbols meeting, moving, just like music. Right? So we know we got it right when our ideas and our symbols create, cross and create. All right, but family, listen. All these ideas are... Um, all these thoughts are mine. I can't wait to hear some of y'all thoughts. Y'all can post them up. The lines was open. I guess nobody saw it. Um, I hope I ain't bored y'all. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I didn't listen. I didn't have a thing down. I am sorry. Um, Brother Dane from Real Fake Media. Hold on. See, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a horrible delay. Sister Jackie brought it to my attention, and I never noticed it. But every time I tried to scroll down, I can't. So there was some conversation going on. And um, understand, family, it's a mistake of the mind and never the heart. Um, come on. Come on. The hell? Oh, there you go. Oh, Shaka on there talking too. All right, that's why we're, okay. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so this is the highs. So we got um, Dame and Jackie talking, and damn it, go down too far. Um, true story. That's why we're real fake media, and we're international household name. I see you in the lane, family. You always got stamina. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's when we start fucking up. When we start trying to drive all over the highway, as you see some of these young niggas on YouTube trying to do, stay in your fucking lane. And you know what I'm saying? And we got to, but that's, you got to learn that shit. If you, you don't know. Hey, Jackie Love, or should I say Jacqueline C. Brooks? Oh, no, oh, he flirting. I ain't, I ain't reading that shit. Um, I end a lick show. So he looking shy. He sending out flirting to you two motherfuckers, man. All right. Oh, uh, um, so, um, Shaka get on, he say Black Phoenix. All right, hold on. 
Um, Dame said, plug me in and respect to your aunt. Honors. I can't read that. To the honors. Okay. All right, here you go. I in the air freaks. It's live on Iliab State. Okay, stay activated. I say, I say, Black Phoenix. So, all right, family. Um, I'm going to play a tune, and we are out. I feel like some aura off balance. Um, Dame, I'm gonna get I gotta I gotta upload some of your stuff on here. I got um I got oh okay. Oh let's let's do shocker since shocker's on the line. We're gonna play some shocker real quick. Let me make sure the speaker on. Girls among swine, it's just a waste of time. Cause they can't see you shine when you walk amongst the blind. Even when you reflect divine, divine word from the wise. Never catch a girl among swine. It's just a waste of time. Cause they can't see you shine when you walk amongst the blind. Even when you reflect divine, say the truth is what I'm about to bring. Listen to the message I sing. I want to shine like diamond ring for you. Those who die, those who bones lie deep in the Atlantic Ocean, those ancestors stolen from the motherland and taken to another land. We honor you, I say, I say. We honor those freedom fighters like Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, Martin Luther King, Harriet Tubman, Mary Bethune, Nat Turner, and the thousands of others who fought, who bled, who died. I say, I say, we honor those, the unknown warriors, whose names we don't know, who fought, who bled and died for freedom. As we pour and we say, I say, I say. 
We honor the unborn children who will continue the legacy of sacrifice, who will fight in honor of those who fought the fight. I say, I say, we call out to those, join the fight, join the fight, and continue to honor those who fought, who bled, and who died. I say, I say. We pour libations and honor those who fought the fight. I get up, stand up, get up, stand up, stay in the fight. Fight with all your might. Take the time to honor those who fought the fight. Marcus, Malcolm. got done listening to what is today what is it um oh you just got done listening to tribal quotes um i ended the show with two songs one of them is called um uh never throw a uh, word to the wise never throw it cast your pearls among swine it's just the waste of time um, Reflect Divine, I think that's what it's called. I gotta find it now. But that's by Brother Shaka. Right? Then also we had Ashe Ashe by Brother uh, B Jazz. And it's on this album called Four Corners. I think that's what it's called. Four Corners of the World. And it's Allende, Brother Allende on there. And Brother Quojo is on that. And of course, you know, this is a Heart of Simba production. <laughs> Strive, 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 family, to do the only thing we know how to do. Blow up your old paradise.